<laughs> Praise the Lord. My uh, open Bible is really getting opened. As the fog bank seems to be getting thicker, there's more moisture in the air and it seems to be drizzling now, which is kind of neat. I really enjoy the fog. But in open Bible, what we've been doing is that we've been looking at the scriptures as though they mean what they say and say what they mean. In other words, if God so designed the world in such a way that he has caused the sun to shine, the moon to rise, the clouds to become in their design full of moisture and give back to the earth that moisture in rain and snow and sleet and hail. <laughs> If God has so orchestrated creation in such a way that he knows every detail and that he calls them by name, that he knows the stars and he's named them, that he knows every hair in your head, that if he has so intricately caused all of this to happen in such a way that every single minutiae, whether it be down to the RNA, the DNA, and the very atoms themselves, and spoken of them in his word, then I think he knows how to put together a Bible. I think he knows how to inspire men who wrote the scriptures to put down the way he wanted it recorded. I think because he's given us his Holy Spirit, he knows how to inspire you to read exactly what you need to see, to hear, and to know about himself as recorded in the Word of God. I think that the Bible is item specific. I know that God, by his Holy Spirit, can take any Bible, no matter what you have, and speak to you in it, because he's God. I'm not, you're not, he is. We're told that you have no need that any man teach you but the Spirit of God that dwells within you. He will guide you into all things. He will teach you. He will instruct you. He will show you the truth. He will reveal to you Jesus. He will do a lot of things. But most importantly, when it comes to the Word of God, He will make it fit perfectly in your life. Because God is the author. God is the designer. God is the contractor. God is the inspiration. God is the person who did it all. I think Maybe what it is, the way it is, where it is, is just fine for us to read. We don't have to put something in there and pretend that it's there. We don't have to add a gap. We don't have to take a gap out. We don't have to put paragraphs in. We don't have to take paragraphs out. We don't have to put chapter and verse in. We don't have to take it out. We just have to read it as it is. That's what this, the open Bible, item specific, version of reading it is all about. We read it as it is for what it is. In Genesis chapter 1, we're at verse 1, or chapter 1, verse 21. <laughs> Good question. Verse 20 and 21. And God said, let the water spring forth abundantly, the moving creature that hath life and fowl, that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. And God created great whales and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly, after their kind and every winged fowl after his kind. And God saw that it was good. Verse 20. And God said, let the water spring forth abundantly, the moving creature that hath life, and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. God said, that should be enough. When you have a problem with creation, when you have a problem with a person telling you what they think, when you have an issue when someone says, this is what I believe, this is what you should do. You go to verse 20 and you read three words that are recorded all the way through chapter 1. These three words 
go over and over and over again. So you should memorize them and know them. And you should answer to every person who has an issue with creation versus evolution. There are a lot of things I don't know about evolution. There's a lot of things I don't know about creation. But I can tell you this. And God said. Now why can't I tell you that? Because in verse 20 right here it says, And God said. So then the next question should be, what did God say? And of course we have what God said. Because when the scripture is written, and God said, that means it isn't someone interpreting it. It isn't someone saying, well, maybe I recorded it wrong. No, God said it. That's the way it is. It is what it is. And what God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life. Mm -hmm. People say, oh, well, you know what? There might be a different word for that. Not for me. Right here, my reading is what I read. What I see is what I see. So what I know is what I know by what I see, by what I hear, and what I understand as I read it. And God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life. The moving creature. The unmoving creature, don't know about, doesn't say. Should I talk about it? No. What I don't know, I don't know. And that's the point of why we do what we do, the way we do it. Don't put something there that isn't there, and don't comment on something that isn't commented on. That's how easy it is to be idle specific. Verse 20 only says, Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life. What else did God say? And fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. Can't fly in the closed firmament. No, it doesn't say that. It doesn't say anything about a closed firmament. It talks about the open firmament of heaven, but it doesn't say what it is. It only says, and fowl, fowl, that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. Too many times people try to read into things, which we don't do. Too many times people try to take out things, which we don't do. Why would you take out, or why would you put in anything when you can just stick with, and God said, and then quote him? Wouldn't that be easier than any other thing that you've heard, that you've read, or that you've seen? What difference does it make if there's a commentary that adds to it? That's commentary. What difference does it make if some teacher has some extra information? That's Bible study. The difference is, can you stand on the Word of God and know what it says? Rather than what it says, how about what God said? And since the Bible is recorded what God said, we know as it is, where it is, the way it is. In Genesis 1.20, And God said, Foul that they may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. God said it. In verse 21, And God created great whales, and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly, after their kind, and every winged fowl after his kind. And God saw that it was good. It's interesting. The people that try to say, God said it, then it was so. God said it, then it was so. Let's be real. God said that the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life. That's all God said. Now we have, and God created great whales. Is it one of the moving creatures? We don't know. We only know what God said, and now we know what God did. Don't confuse the two and don't overlap them. A lot of times people try to insert things, and then as soon as you insert one thing, you're going to insert another that isn't there. You're going to put things where they shouldn't be. Keep them in a divine order, so to speak. Keep them in a Seder. Keep them as the way that a Jewish mind looks at it. Line upon line. Precept upon precept. Adding to the understanding of it exactly as it is. Because too many people will go exaggeration or explanation that will add something of their own understanding and interpretation to it rather than be specific about what God said, and leave it at that. 
what we don't know, we don't know what we do know, we do know what, what we do know is said here. And what that is, is God created great whales. Great whales. And every living creature that moveth. Interesting. Every living creature that moveth. Every living creature that moveth. Which the way waters brought forth abundantly. The waters brought forth. Is it the waters like in some kind of muck and ooze that causes you know, creation to have a foothold to say that maybe there is an evolution from creation that evolved out of the ooze and the mire of some mud and clay and then the waters brought forth life and they existed for thousands of years and somehow it comes forth to be proven in verse 21? It doesn't say that. <laughs> Come on! Why put it in? It doesn't say. It doesn't leave an opening and it doesn't put a closing. It is what it is. Which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind. Every living creature that moveth after their kind. The waters brought forth abundantly. And every winged fowl after his kind. And God saw that it was good. So God created the great whales. God created every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth. So when God created them, the waters brought forth in this verse 21. And every winged fowl after his kind that flew in the heavens, God created every winged fowl. If you find an unwinged fowl, God didn't create it. Does it say that? It says every wing and fowl. So you see, in verse 21 and verse 20, we are establishing the fact that you stick with what God said, we stick with what God did, and we stick with the way he recorded it. The reason being is that too many people will take one word, one letter, one dot, one jittle, and remove it or put it in and add an extra, and it doesn't work. It's like any formula. You put one extra symbol in a formula, the formula won't work. You put one dot, one semicolon, one question mark, one asterisk in code on a computer, and I guarantee you that it won't work. <laughs> Definitely, it will not work. You will get an error message. So. If it so be that we in our own mind and understanding can see that in our own examples, how much more so should we honor that which we've been given, the Word of God, by leaving it the way it is, where it is, as it is, because God said, God did, and God put it here for us. That's the way it is. And that's the way it always will be. Because irregardless of how man may try to change it, what it is, is the way it is, where it is, as it is. In Genesis 20, 21 of chapter 1, And God said, Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life, and fowl that they may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. And God created great whales, and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, and every winged fowl after his kind, and God saw that it was good. If God could see all that was good that he had done, then how dare we say that this cannot be the way it is, as it is, such as it is. This is what it is because God gave it to us. It says what it means, it means what it says, and God is revealing it to you. So you would have a sure word of prophecy. And the more sure word of prophecy will be revealed as we go from Genesis to Revelation, which you'll find in the content of it. The perfect example of what love is. And that will be Jesus. You'll see. The heart of God is in the reality of his Son. And the revelation of God is his Son. And the fulfillment of God is the word of God that is Jesus. So we'll see that in Genesis through Revelation if we get the entire thing. But the bottom line is, let it be good for you. 
but let it be a reading that you just read it as it is and you'll let your mind exist in the pleasant place that God has put it in that safe comfort zone that God wants you to be in which is his word the way he wrote it the way he wants it to be read